All right, so we have the Rossman Chance applet open here. And what we're going to do is go a little bit deeper into an example here. And we're going to use some of the data from the applet. So we are using the close friends data. And so just to kind of walk back through what we talked about in the last video, how the setup is, we again have two populations. So here we've got men, and then we have women. And you can see this is broken up by sex here. You've got men here, but if we scroll down, you'll see it's just an order. There's also some women here too. Okay. Now, what they are now going to measure, ask about, so there's first we split, then what we do is we talk about the variable close friends. So the variable here, it seems they're asking how many close friends they have. Okay, and you can see that there's some men here say they have zero close friends, one close friend, two, and so on, and then three, and just more and more and more. Look at all these people with all their close friends. And then you've got some women who have zero, some who have one, and then so on. So then for each group here, what we can do is we can think about the average number of close friends, okay? But we're gonna do that for both groups, average number of close friends. So see how we actually are looking at the same thing for both groups, which is really nice. There's, so but it seemed like I'm, I'm throwing at you two parameters, two different statistics, and while they are different because they're about a different group, it's really the same thing we're measuring though, so it's really not like two things in terms of how complicated it is to, to do. So for the men, average number of close friends. For the women, average number of close friends. But again, these are populations here, so I can't know this. It's too big. So what we have here is some data from samples. So this again, these are the populations that I'm looking at. But in this scenario, I have gone here and done some samples. So this is now smaller. This one's smaller. This is the women. And these are now samples here. Now, again, for the samples, well, what am I going to measure? Well, I'm going to measure the average number of close friends, just like I did here. And again, the, the, now the sample of women, well, I'm still going to measure the average number of close friends. I'm, that's what I'm, I'm working on here. But remember, we just have, we have to break these apart because they're symbols here. For the men, this would be mu m. For the women, it's mu w. Now, we got to remember, what's the symbol for the average here, but from a sample? Well, that symbol, remember, is x bar, we'll put an m here for men, x bar women. So let's just split this in half. I'll just do this for a second. Does this not look each half like something we've done before? We have a population. We have a parameter. We have a sample. We have a statistic. I, I mean, we're just doing the same thing, right? It's almost like we're doing it twice here with the two different populations, and then we're going to bring it together in a second. So what's the next step here? Well, the next step was hinted at in the last video. What we're going to do for our hypotheses is we're going to say, just like we've done before, if the average number of close friends for men and women is different, you know, that could be any number difference. I don't know. And so what we do instead is we say, I'm not going to mess with that. Instead, I'm going to focus on, right here, I'm going to focus on the average number of close friends for men being equal to that of women. And there's another way to write that, remember from the last video. Their difference is zero. Zero is this key value here, really key. If men and women have the same number on average of close friends, their difference is zero. It's a number I get to hold on to do something with. All right? And then in this case, you know, if we don't have any reason to think 
that men or women will have more close friends on average, then we can just rewrite this as the difference in the average number of close friends is not zero. Could be one, it could be two, could be half, could be pi, who knows? Could be anything if it's not zero. But writing it this way just grabs all those numbers and says any of those. So we got these hypotheses. And so this should look so, so familiar to what we've done before, right? Now, you set up hypotheses. What did you need? What else did you need previously? Well, something we're missing in this picture right here is a statistic. What's our statistic going to be? It's almost like we have two here, right? We've got our x bars, but we, we can't have multiple statistics to try to answer this hypothesis or answer you know, the questions we want with these hypotheses. So what we, instead we need is to combine these into the statistic that we're going to use. And the way we do that, it's not too bad, is we combine them. Let's think about this. How do I want to combine these? I want to compare them, right? I want to know, is one bigger than the other? Are they the same? Are they different? Well, just look, look down here. What did I do to combine these into one, one number? I put a minus sign. Boom. That's our statistic. There you go. Take the average for your sample of men. Take your average for your sample of women and just subtract them. See what you get. If you get zero, whoa, and then they were the same between the samples. If you get one, that meant on average in your samples, men had one more close friend. Again, on average and just from your samples. If you get negative one, that would mean actually this women group has more close friends on average by one. So our numbers that we get for our, our statistics, you know, are can be a little bit more complicated because we have the pluses and minuses now and we have to think back to the groups and how that applies. But it's, it's really not too bad. All right. So there you go. That's the setup for this problem.